This is the Supermarine Spearfish 32 and if we were in the automotive world we'd probably refer to it as a resto mod where they take a traditional shell and fit it out with thoroughly modern mechanics, systems and build techniques. Now this boat actually uses exactly the same Anand Bernard hull of the fairy powerboats of the 60s and 70s that had such racing success but the difference here is that above that it has all the modern conveniences you'd expect of a 35 foot sports cruiser with a starting price of £340,000 including VAT and doesn't it just look sensational? The boat is hand built here in Chichester by an intimate team of craftsmen and the details are pretty stunning. It sits so low in the water, it's a modern boat but it has the sleek lines that you'd expect of a boat of the, the era that it's, that it's sort of based on. But you see all these modern touch points, like the fact you've got these lovely pop-up cleats here. You've got the stainless steel rubbing strake that runs all the way around the side. These bursts of orange that pop out from the top sides, the Supermarine logo and this racing stripe that runs down the side of these sculptured top sides. And just take a look at these engine vents down here. Based on a Spitfire, they look absolutely amazing. And the thing about this boat is it's going to be built in small numbers. It's a production boat, but on a small scale. So there is some customization to do here. Obviously, this is a very modern iteration, but if you wanted one with, say, a blue hull, real teak as opposed to this grey S-Tech, you didn't want this grey aluminium A-frame and you wanted blue seats with traditional piping, you could do all that. This is a very modern take but there is quite a lot of customization available if you were to buy one for yourself. Now with a beam of just 2.95 meters, that doesn't leave an enormous amount of room for side decks. So it's very much a one foot in front of the other affair. And of course there are no guardrails to help keep you secure. That said, you have always got something to grab onto. This windscreen surround acts as quite a nice grab rail. And then up on the coach roof, there is a rail that you can sort of crouch down and grab onto when you're there. Of course, no guardrails also means there's nowhere to tie fenders. So they've got these clever system where the fenders just pop in to the side decks using these little rivets. It is a style thing, and you can understand why they haven't gone for the guardrails, but some may feel a little bit precarious moving up to the bow here. The good news is, is that when you're right forward up on the bow, it does flatten off nicely, so it's easy to keep your feet. And actually, it's quite a practical space. You've got two lockers here. This one aft, which is actually really deep, and that's how you have access to the windlass, but it's also big enough to swallow two or three fenders. And then this one here is actually access to the anchor itself. As I said, it's a lovely ultramarine anchor. It's through hull, but this gives you access to the roller and the anchor itself. And because the freeboard is so low, it's a very easy boat to get on board, but you can of course also board here at the stern onto this sort of ducktail bathing platform back here, which is really nicely proportioned. Good to see that you've got fresh shower as well, so you can shower after, after you've been for a swim. And then you're met by these fantastic sun lounges, which are in a great space to soak up the sun. You can have some shade. There is a canopy that'll come back off the radar arch and one forward to give you a bit of shelter. But a day like this, you want all the sunshine coming in exactly as it is doing. Of course, underneath here is the engine hatch. We'll have a proper look at the engines in a moment. And this central walkway is great because it means that you can get onto the boat really easily and then you're down into this cockpit. And because there's no a midships cabin on this boat, the cockpit is nice and low. You feel really well protected. Yes, it's a completely open boat, but look how deep this seating area is under this wraparound windscreen. Nice high seats as well, so you're well supported. And as I said, there is flexibility in this cockpit. This boat has a pop-up table like this. That's not gonna suit everybody. You can have a proper table in the middle if you prefer, if you're gonna use it for, for dining regularly. You have a little sink here this side. You can extend this wet bar though if you want a bit more space along to this side. And then underneath, you have a bit of storage, but there is the option to have a fridge here if you prefer. As I said, this is a very modern fit out. So you have the gray acetate, you have the gray upholstery, but that can all be changed if you want something a little bit more traditional. And you can also fill in this seating area here. So where this companionway comes into the cockpit, you can fill that space in so that you have a more full wrap around if you've got more people wanting to sit on board. The practical stuff hasn't been forgotten either. There's handholds all over the place, really nicely finished as well. And deck storage is good as well. This aft hatch opens into a nice dry storage space. There's also access here to the engine shutoffs and the battery separators as well. This hatch here is access to the top of the fuel tank. And there's also storage underneath all of this seating. Now it's a little bit fiddly to get to because you have to lift off the cushions and then a hatch, but it's nice to have it. Now one big surprise aboard the Spearfish 
is how much space there is in this interior. And I know you're going to say it's a 35 foot sports cruiser. You can buy 35 foot sports cruisers with two cabins and a massive galley and all that stuff is true, but they are not built to these dimensions. You know, this is effectively 60s, 70s hull dimensions with a modern interior. And considering the freeboard from the outside, because the coach roof goes up like it does, amazing really to have over six foot one of standing headroom here in the galley area. Okay, it cuts right down over the seating area, but you're gonna be sitting or lying down there anyway. And the finish and components are really, really smart. It's all Miele cooking. You've got a Smeg sink, this great coffee maker here, because this is the sort of stuff you're gonna be doing on this boat. You're not gonna be making big lunches. You're gonna be having morning coffee, something to drink in the afternoon or the evening. It's practical as well. Good size fridge got a little bin that pops out here. These buster and punch handles are absolutely lovely. Everything looks and feels really solid. Again, it's very modern down here. You could have a more traditional finish if you wanted. And there's storage peppered all the way around the side. And actually there's quite a good size hanging locker here at least so you can hang some clothes off all finished in the cedar. Everything is shut with a nice satisfying clunk. Over on this side, you have a screen that mirrors the MFDs up on the helm. So you have full control of the boat from down here. So down here, you might only want to use, say, the Luma Shore lighting so you can change all the colours and you can make it jump along to music, for example. You also have your chart plotter down here. You can check engine information. So if you're in bed, you don't have to go up onto deck to check anything if you need to do quickly. This area here, at the moment, it's set up as seating, but the table drops down at the touch of a button and that's where your bed is. You pull out those end cushions and there's an infill cushion and actually that space becomes what they call a trotter box in the sailing world. So you put your feet down there and you've got a decent sleeping space. And the bathroom as well. I'm six foot one, I have to stand in there with my head stooped. So you're not gonna be showering in there regularly, but there is a pull out shower if you want it. But again, it's nicely finished and all the components are really smart. And now we're onto the really important stuff. The engine room. Great thing about this design is that you've got the sun pad on top of it. But that means this whole hatch lifts up to give you really excellent access to the engines. They're quite flexible at engine choice. This is probably what they'd say is sort of the pick. It's the Mercury diesel, TDIs, a V8, 370 horsepower, basically the V8 TDIs that you get in your Volkswagen Touareg or an Audi Q7 but they're nice compact units, so they fit inside this narrow beam. Bravo three leg stern drives, but you could have a single Volvo Penta if you wanted. You could even have Yamahas on V drive, so you can have shafts if you want, but this is what the yard think is the, is the pair to have. On the price list, you've got this, and then you've got the smaller V6s, 270 horsepower, but I haven't driven it yet. I think these will be a really sweet pairing. And as you can see, immaculate insulation. You can get to everything really easily. All of the ancillaries, Engines have got enough of room around them so that you can get to all the bits you need to. Really well sorted machinery space. But that's enough talking about them. Let's get them started up and see what it can do. This is exactly where you want to be sitting aboard the Spearfish 32. The way you slot yourself into this cocoon of a helm, it's just so wonderful, it's evocative. It's like slipping into the seat of an MG Roadster or an Austin Healey. Everything is so close and intimate. And of course you look through this wonderful windscreen over that coach roof, no guardrail to speak of. It really is a wonderful view. Now this particular boat is fitted with about 12 grand's worth of shocks, full suspension seats. And they are wonderful bits of kit. Absolutely amazing craftsmanship. Feel a little bit overkill maybe when you've got this hull beneath you. But the beauty of them is, so you can sit like this now and the seat is taking all of the shock, but you can also pop them down. So they're a shock absorbing seat that you can also stand at. And for me, this is the position. This is just wonderful. Now you really have got the wind going through your hair. You can hear and see the water peeling off the sides of the hull. We're only doing 20 knots here. These twin 370 horsepower diesel V8s barely even working. And this is a boat that is much happier at higher speeds. It's been quite a choppy day today. And at 40 knots, it's covering ground so much more comfortably than it is at 20 knots. At 20 knots, the turbos are trying to spool up and the hull really isn't in any sort of rhythm. 
30 knots minimum, I'd say, in a short chop, and the boat just devours it. It is the most incredible feeling. It's the first time I've driven a hull of this type, and it's taken me most of the day to realise, just let the hull get on with it. Because on most boats where you might think, oh, we're going to land awkwardly, I need to throttle back, or I need to adjust the steering, you soon get out of that habit and just let the hull do the work. When you turn sharply on this boat, it heels in like lots of boats do, and then you brace for it to sort of wallow the other way. This does not do that. It just stays absolutely pinned to the turn. And in terms of ride comfort, it's absolutely incredible. The softness of the ride is, is so special. And you think about what this boat's designed for, you know, the hull, racing, this boat charging from here in the Soden Sea to Alderney for lunch, you'll do that absolutely no problem. Cruising at 40 knots, maxing out at 47, maybe 50 if you've got light liquids and you trim her out, but it's just absolutely effortless. I love how lazy it feels at 30 knots. That's what we're doing now, two and a half thousand RPM. We're doing combined fuel use of just under 60 litres an hour, which is extraordinary really, considering the power we've got back there. But then, now hold on to your camera, Paul, if you floor it, there is so much power left. Woo! 40 knots. Now, throttle back just to make things a bit more manageable, but the mid-range punch from those V8 TDIs is unbelievable. It's absolutely savage. But then there, we're back down at 25 knots and it feels like you're at walking pace. And I'm somebody who complains a lot about things being too far away from me at Helms. No danger of that on this boat. If anything, I'm a little bit too close. I know that's really pernickety. I do love it though, and it's not things being an arm's length away, things are a finger's length away. And it's stuff like, yes, you've got these two amazing MFDs, but they have got a manual control pad down here because when you're traveling along quickly, you don't want to be stabbing at a touchscreen. So you can just scroll in and out with this wheel here. Much, much better find control. These Mercury throttles will be familiar to the outboards as well. And you've got a one throttle option, which I would, I would take if you're moving quickly because it just gives you a bit more fine control. It's hard to control both when you're moving fast. And if anything, the wheel and the throttles are slightly too close to each other, which I know is the opposite of what I'm usually complaining about. But you do just catch your hand on the throttle neck sometimes. Not so much of a problem at higher speeds. And then a load of adjustment here. The wheel's fully adjustable. As I said, the seats are absolutely awesome. It's such an event to drive this boat. And a real pleasure. The dash looks great as well. I love the leather top and the carbon fibre effect behind the MFDs. And it's not just the helmsman who does really well in terms of their position. Both navigators have one of these fab shock seats. They've got grab rails right in front of them. They've got a footrest as well, so they can steady themselves whether they're sitting or standing. And of course, on this side, this person has really good access to this screen. So if the driver's just got the en engine instruments up here, you can have the chart up here or the rolling road. And then on this side, again, you have all of that repeated, but you have storage instead of the MFD. It's a really well thought out setup and just designed for traveling quickly. And it's not just good in a straight line. It's grip and its ability to cling on in hard turns is absolutely fantastic. You have complete trust in the hull that it's, it's never gonna sort of be wrong footed. And where you might expect it to catch and maybe swing you the other way, it just doesn't happen. You can carry lots of speed through hard turns. And we're back into the wind now, as you can probably hear. It's that really sort of light chop and this thing just loves it. But it loves to be going more quickly. That's 30 knots. And there's just so much agility. <laughs> it really is something. When you think about how old this hull design is and how well it still works today with all of this added weight and modern engines, 
that is what you call timeless design. This is not some flimsy pastiche that fails to pay homage to its predecessors or work as a modern sports cruiser. For those who love the mystique of fairy, there is enough here to get your teeth into, but the crucial thing about the Spearfish 32 is that it stands up as a package on its own merit. Sure, it's quite a lot of money for a boat that doesn't have a separate cabin, and you could have a Fairline F-Line 33 or Windy 32 Grand Zonda for similar money, but as good as those boats are, they just don't have the same amount of soul. In the Supermarine Spearfish 32, a legend lives on. Thank you very much for watching our review of the Supermarine Spearfish 32. If you enjoyed it please give the video a like and remember to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video.